Good morning. Today we are going to demonstrate the transverse waves on a string experiment. So let us start by looking at the apparatus. So this is the string and the string is fixed to one end over here, here. One end of the string is fixed here and then the string passes through this device which will cause the string to oscillate, vibrate. This is a vibrator. And the string then continues like this and the string passes over a pulley. The string passes over a pulley and then it is attached to a pan and we can place weights on the pan to provide tension on the string. We can put weights on the pan to put tension on the string. In addition to this, let me show you this signal generator which feeds an electrical signal to the vibrator. So I have switched on the signal generator. It generates a sinusoidal electric signal and of around 27 hertz, 25 hertz and this signal comes through this wire to this vibrator and it causes the wire to vibrate. And we also have a ruler which we use to measure the length of the string And these are the weights which we use, which we place on the pan to produce tension. So this in a nutshell is the apparatus for this experiment. Let us start the experiment. Note that the pan is empty to start with. We have not put any weight. So the pan itself weighs 50 grams. So the tension in the string is 50 grams into Earth's acceleration. That is the tension of the string. So let us start the vibrator which will cause the string to move. So the vibrator has started. You can see that the string is set into oscillations. It, the, each point in the string is oscillating. These are extremely small, but it is there. You can see it. If you look carefully, you can see it. Okay. Now we will. You can see that we don't have a standing wave. We have a wave that bounces back and forth. And we will slowly change the frequency. You can see that the amplitude of the oscillation is going to increase as we approach the fundamental frequency. And we are slowly approaching the fundamental frequency, first harmonic, no, the fundamental, and so we are approaching the fundamental and you can see that the amplitude is increasing slowly and then we now have a standing wave on the string. So you can see 
that the center has the maximum oscillation amplitude and the two ends are fixed. So the wavelength of this vibration uh, is half is double the length of the string. The, the length of the string is half a wave. So this is the fundamental mode of vibration of a string. Okay. okay. empty to start with. We have not put any extra weight on the pan. The pan itself weighs 50 grams. So we have 50 grams into the acceleration, the tension, that is the tension on the string and we will now start the experiment. So to start the experiment, we will switch on the vibrator which will set the string into oscillation, different parts of the string will start oscillating and you can see that we do not have a standing wave now. The frequency is not suitable for a standing wave and uh, but we do have we do have uh, oscillation, the string is vibrating so it's a traveling wave which is bouncing back and forth and uh, you can see it I hope on the string. Right. Now the next step we will adjust the frequency of the signal generator so that it is very close to the frequency corresponding to the fundamental and we have the first standing wave on the string, the standing wave of the lowest frequency on the string. You can see it there. The center of the string exhibits the maximum oscillation and the two ends are static. So we have now achieved the fundamental mode of oscillation of the string. I need not to start and hear it. Oh, see the tower. You can now see the fundamental mode of the vibration. Still. We will slowly now increase the frequency and you can see that the amplitude drops, we no longer have a standing wave. And now we have the first harmonic. You can see that you have a node at the center and then two antinodes at the two sides. And then at the ends also the string is stationary. We will increase at hold. Okay, we are now going to change the frequency, increase it further to the second harmonic.
there. You can see that the amplitude at the center is now maximum and we have the second harmonic. So you have one node, one anti node now coming up, and then another node, another anti node, and then it is fixed at the end. So you now have two nodes. So, let me summarize that we have been doing the experiment with no weight on the pan. So, it is 50 grams which is causing the tension and we first saw the fundamental mode of vibration. Then we increased the frequency and we saw the first harmonic and then we increased the frequency further and we saw the second harmonic. We will now repeat the experiment with different weights. So here I am showing you the 50 gram weight. We will place the 50 gram weight on the pan. and repeat the entire experiment. Let me remind you that in case I have forgotten to tell you that the length of the string which we are using is 1 meter. So the entire experiment which was shown to you was for a length of 1 meter. In this experiment, we repeat the entire procedure for different lengths and different tensions. Okay. Thank you. And you can see that the amplitude drops, we no longer have a standing wave. And now, we have the first harmonic of the vibration. You can see that you have a node at the center and then two antinodes at the two sides. And then at the ends also the string is stationary. It will increase by hold. change the frequency, increase it further to the second half. There, you can see that the amplitude at the center is now maximum and we have the second harmonic. So you have one node, one anti node now coming up, and then another node, another anti node, and then it is fixed at the end. So you now have two nodes.
So let me summarize that we have been doing the experiment with no weight on the pan. So it is 50 grams which is causing the tension. And we first saw the fundamental mode of vibration. Then we increased the frequency and we saw the first harmonic. And then we increased the frequency further and we saw the second harmonic. We will now repeat the experiment with different weights. So here I am showing you the 50 gram weight. We will place the 50 gram weight on the pan <clears throat> and repeat the entire experiment. Let me remind you that in case I have forgotten to tell you that the length of the string which we are using is one meter. So the entire experiment which was shown to you was for a length of one meter. In this experiment we repeat the entire procedure for different lengths and different tensions. Okay. Thank you. I will now discuss how the observations are to be recorded in the table in the practical notebook. We first <clears throat> record the tension in the string. The tension in the string is set by the weight of the pan and the extra weight which is put on the pan. So for the first set of readings, we have placed a 50 gram weight on the pan. So the total tension is 50 plus 50 into the acceleration due to gravity. You can see that this is entered in the second column of the table. Right, so the second column of the table has the tension in the string, which is 50 plus 50, the whole thing multiplied by the gravitational acceleration. In the third column of the table, we record the length of the string. So the experiment was conducted with a length of 1.5 meters and you can see that L equal to 1.50 is recorded in the third column of the string. Having recorded the tension and the length, we will now start the signal generator and slowly increase the frequency and until we get the first standing wave. So you can see that the first standing wave has occurred at a frequency of 7.5 hertz. So we have one loop. One loop means a sing the first standing wave, which is also the fundamental mode of vibration of the string. And this has been recorded in the first row of the fourth and the sixth columns respectively. We again increase the frequency. The amplitude, as we have seen, the amplitude goes down and again it goes up and we have a standing wave again which is produced at a frequency of 11 hertz. And this occurs at 11 hertz and we now have two loops as we have seen. We have a node at the center and we have two loops. So this is the first harmonic of the vibrations of the string. And then we keep on increasing the frequency and we keep on recording the frequency corresponding to standing waves 
<coughs> and these correspond to the third and fourth harmonics as we go on. So as you can see, we first record the tension in the second column, the length of the string in the third column, and then we keep on increasing the frequency and for each standing wave, we note down the frequency and the number of loops. So number of loops, one is the fundamental mode, two is the first harmonic, three is the second harmonic and so forth. And then you, after having recorded all of these readings, you change the tension in the string, you can put a hundred grams weight and repeat the whole thing so that the total tension now will be 150 into G. You can also change the length and repeat the entire exercise. The, uh, the data, entire data which was recorded is available on Google Drive and I shall share the uh, link with you at the end of this video. After taking all the readings, we have to do the calculations which are shown here. So we have to calculate 1 by the frequency in seconds and that has to be filled in the fifth column and then we calculate the wavelength which is 2L by the number of loops in the seventh column and in the Eighth and ninth columns, we calculate the speed of the wave on the string. So the first of these two columns, that is the eighth column, you have to fill in the speed calculated from your measurements of the wavelength and frequency. And in the ninth column, you have to calculate the speed of the wave as expected from theory, which is square root of the tension divided by the mass per unit length. You can see that the mass per unit length is also given. It is given right at the top of this sheet. The mass per unit length here is 0 0.9 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg per meter. It is mentioned there at the top of the sheet. Okay. <clears throat> So I hope it is clear how the data is to be recorded. We shall now perform the standing wave, longitudinal wave experiment. So for this experiment, to generate the sound wave, we use tuning forks. Each tuning fork has a specified frequency. So if I hit the tuning fork and hold it, it vibrates at a specified frequency. I hope you can hear the sound. If not, we shall have a separate recording where you should be able to hear the sound. And we are hitting it on this block of wood which is coated with rubber. The wave is set up in this plastic, in this column here which has got graduate, which is graduated so you can measure the length and we take a measuring tube like this and fill it with water. And then we immerse this tube which is open at both sides, both ends, hollow tube which is open at both ends and it has got these markings. So we take this and we immerse it in the water. So the water closes one end of the tube and by moving the tube up and down, 
you can change the height of the air column. So we adjust the height of the air column by moving the tube up and down. So in this experiment, what we will do is that we will take the tuning fork, hit it against this and then hold it here. And then we will move the tube up and down until we get a resonance. The sound of the vibration, vibrating tuning fork becomes very loud at the resonant position and you should be able to hear it. So for recording this, we have set up a camera which you can see here and we will record the entire thing using the microphone of this camera. So I hope that you will be able to hear the resonance over this, over your speakers when the resonance is, when the resonance occurs. Okay. So let us go ahead and perform the experiment. I will now discuss how the observations are recorded for the longitudinal wave experiment. So the first thing that you record is the natural frequency of the tuning fork. This is written on the body of the tuning fork and as you can see in the second column of this table we have recorded the natural frequency of the tuning fork in hertz. And then we strike the tuning fork and adjust the length of the air column so that we can, we have a standing wave, the sound becomes loud and we record the length of that column in centimeters. So for 512 hertz, the length comes out to be 17.5 centimeters. And uh, this is the fundamental mode. And uh, it is very difficult to make out the overtones, the higher harmonics. So we essentially focus entirely on the fundamental modes. Then we change the tuning fork and the tuning fork which has been chosen second it has got a natural frequency of 384 hertz and we have it has to be struck and then held above the air column and then the length of the air column is varied until we find that the sound matches the sound goes up we have a resonance and here this occurs at for a length of 21 centimeters. Again, this is 
just the fundamental. It is extremely difficult to make out the overtones. So we can try out different tuning forks and repeat the whole procedure for each tuning fork. Having done this, then we go to calculations. So in the third column, for each frequency, we calculate one by new in seconds. So for each tuning fork, we have a different frequency. And for each frequency, we calculate one by new in seconds and put it in the third column. We have recorded the number of the mode number that is one basically for all the readings. So we have recorded this in the fifth column. And in the sixth column, we calculate the wavelength. So when we have the fundamental, the wavelength is four times the length of the column. So we calculate the wavelength and then we use the frequency into the wavelength to calculate the velocity of sound in air. So this way we have a table where for each tuning, we use each tuning fork to get an independent estimate of the velocity of sound in air. And then we can also make a plot of the uh, wavelength as a function of one by frequency and the slope from the slope of this, we can also determine the speed of sound. So the data are, uh, which have been recorded are available to you on Google Drive and I shall uh, share the link with you at the end of this video.